Thank you for joining us today. We will be talking about an emergency fund, going into some details, explain how what it is, um, you know, the benefits of it, and then also show you a brief example of how to calculate what your emergency fund should be. Uh, the links in this video will be through Investopedia. It is a great source of information, and no, they are not a sponsor of this video. Uh, so first we're going to talk about uh, what is an emergency fund. So the term emergency fund refers to money stashed away that people can use in time of financial distress. The purpose of an emergency fund is to improve financial security by creating a safety net that can be used to meet unanticipated expenses such as an illness or major home repair. Assets in an emergency fund tend to be cash or other highly liquid assets. This reduces the need to either draw from high interest debt options such as credit cards or unsecured loans, loans or undermine your future security by tapping into retirement funds. Uh, so after uh, these past fast, last two years with COVID and the shutdown and how that impacted some people's um, income, especially employment, you can definitely see the need of having an emergency fund. Uh, so understanding emergency funds, you establish an emergency fund when you put away money that is intended to be used during times of financial hardship. This includes the loss of your job and debilitating illness or a major repair to your home or car, not to mention the kind of major con economic crisis and lockdown that happened in 2020, <laughs> which is what we just talked about. Uh, the basic size of your emergency fund depends on a number of factors, including financial situation, expenses, lifestyle, and debts. Many financial advisors recommend saving enough to cover anywhere between three to six months worth of expenses. Uh, that can help uh, you weather a modest health care bill or short bout of unemployment. So uh, next we're going to talk about how to build an emergency fund. Having an emergency fund is a necessity. Think of it as a shock absorber for the bumps of life, one that it keep you adding uh, to the load and debt of your life unlikely already carry. The coronavirus has shown a giant spotlight uh, on the difference having an emergency fund makes when a crisis hits. What you'll need. While some call having one to two months wages and reserve ideal, most financial experts say uh, that the recommended emergency fund amount could cover three to six months worth of household expenses. That's a great idea. Any key part of any sound financial plan, but is also requires some sort uh, of effort to achieve. The first step in the process to figure out how much you will spend each month, consumer expenditure figures released in April 2019 by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics indicate that the average annual expenditure per consumer unit, which is similar to a household, was $60,060 in 2017. This data is broken down by month in the table below. Uh, the months in bold highlight the cumulative quarterly expenses and therefore the recommended cash reserve for the average household. Now keep in mind this is going to be different for everyone. Uh, some people's income may be different. Uh, some people's household may be different. You may be single. You may be a couple. You may have one child. You may have four children. So of course what your uh, monthly expenditure uh, is going to be different than the next person. This right here is just an example. Uh, so it's saying that um, if you were to prepare for six months, that would be 30K, but that just take that with a grain of salt. What we're going to talk about here in the next slide is an emergency fund calculator. I'll also leave this link in the description so you can work out your own numbers. But this is essentially what it looks like. So for example, we're just going to go through and throw some numbers around so let, let you have an idea of what that looks like. So let's just say your rent or mortgage payment is $1,500. Uh, and keep in mind, uh, it is, this includes uh, mortgage or rent payments, property taxes, home or renter's insurance, HOA fees, and household repairs. So let's say 
household repairs, let's say 2000 Utility payments, which include water, garbage, recycling, gas, electric, phone, internet, and cable. So let's say um, you have a home. Uh, let's just say 300 Let's say 300 Let's say 100 for water, 100 for electricity, and 100 for uh, internet, cable, and home phone. And gas. Right, let's say you have a gas stove. Let's say 325 Okay. For transportation, this includes gas, car payments, car insurance, public transit, and or ride sharing gap, which is, I'm guessing, Uber or Lyft or something like that. Uh, public transportation would be like a bus, or if you live like in the city, you have a subway or something. So let's say you have a car payment of uh, 250 and you have a car insurance of 150 that's $400. Wait, yeah, car insurance. Oh, yeah, and gas. So let's say so that's 400 Let's say for gas, you commute to work. You don't work at home. Uh, let's say for gas, you spend... Gas is pretty expensive right now. Let's say you spend two fifty, so that's six fifty a month. Golly, that's a lot of money. I didn't realize that. Um, so let's say for food, and groceries, uh, takeout, and restaurants. Uh, let's say for a, a family of two, you spend a hundred groceries. Groceries are getting up there right now. Right now, this video is made during a time of inflation, so we're gonna say you spend one fifty a week. Four weeks in a month, so that's also six hundred. As you can see, we're getting up there over here, and this is why it's good to have a budget because you already know these expenses. But if you don't have a budget, then you're you know you're either looking at your bank statements or you're just throwing some numbers around. But let's say for debt for credit cards, let's say you don't have a lot of credit cards. Let's say you have two hundred. Let's say you're you're pretty good with with debt, and let's say for medical health insurance doctor and dental bills let's say um, well this is also going to depend on how healthy you are so let's just say let's just say this is just for like your health insurance and your life insurance let's let's put it that way so 250 for that or well, let's make it 200 then other expenses including personal care child care taxes and other insurances and leisure um, that can be I mean with child care such as daycare I mean I I see the signs when I drive around the, the city. That's pretty expensive. So that's like what three to five hundred dollars a week. So let's say that's three hundred dollars a week. Golly, that's a lot of money. Let's say um, let's say a grand. Personal care. So personal care could be haircuts or uh, a female getting their nails done or getting their hair done. Uh, taxes and other insurances. Let's say five hundred a month for whatever reason. So, after putting all these numbers in, by the way, you can use this calculator and do your own numbers, but that's about $4,475 a month. And if you were to prepare just for six months, like let's say COVID hit and the shutdown happened and you lost your job, to cover your cost of living your lifestyle for six months, based off of these numbers, is $26,850. So, uh, this one helps you understand, hey, if I don't have a budget, maybe I need to get a budget so I can gain some control of my expenses. And it also gives you a bigger picture of how much you're spending per month and how much it would cost to have uh, six months of emergency fund in case something were to go wrong. So I definitely hope that this uh, calculator helped a lot. So now we're at the end. Uh, I do hope that this information in reference to emergency fund, especially that emergency calculator, helped. Uh, please feel free to follow us on Instagram at Think Income, uh, which will be posting information uh, in reference to some of the accounts that I'm investing in, their performance, and then just general information on mindset and finance. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below if you found this is helpful. If you did find it helpful, just put the number one make it short and sweet if you did not put the number two and if you do have any questions or concerns please uh, don't hesitate to reach out I'll be more than happy to help you in any way that I can once again I always try to remind you all please remember to put your money to work uh, so that way you can make money while you sleep and I'll catch you all in the next one peace